Hello and welcome to Agenda 2030. I am Toyin Nkamiang John. The issue of proper integration and provision for people with disabilities in the last weeks took the center stage and what is the government and stakeholders doing about this? Also, the need to equip the youth with life skills and provide them with decent work has also been on the front burner. On this episode, we will be serving you the full dose of the challenges and stakeholders' efforts to address them. First, let's join Adesua Osui with the news around the world to stay with us. University of Ghana broke new grounds in mobilization of young people towards the 2030 agenda when it played host to the first ever global SDG Youth Summit. The summit, attended by over 1,100 participants from over 25 countries, was organized to empower and connect youth leaders and change makers across the continent to work together for the purpose of creating a sustainable world. Specifically, the summit was organized with the purpose of activating young people as catalysts for change towards the attainment of the set goals of 2030 agenda. The event was chaired by President Nana Akufo Addo of Ghana and had on the panel youths from different African countries. One of the prominent participants was Nigerian actor Jemima Osunde, who admonished every young person to adopt and personalize their goal in the best way they can. Donors of the African Development Fund, ADF, has agreed to commit $7.6 billion to speed up growth in Africa's poorest nations and help lift millions out of poverty. The fund comprises 32 contributing states and benefits 37 countries, including those experiencing higher growth rates, headed towards new emerging markets and fragile states needing special supports for basic service delivery. The fund's resources are replenished. 30 Jordanian and Syrian women in the Karak district of Pakistan have successfully completed training in entrepreneurial skills as part of the United Nations Development Program's ASILA project, an initiative by UNDP Jordan in partnership with Unilever that supports and empowers women in remote and developing countries. The training by UNDP is geared towards increasing women's participation in economic activities, especially in the retail distribution sector, as well as empowering them to become middlemen distributors via home-based businesses. The Netherlands, a country reputed as the world's second largest exporter of agricultural produce after the USA, is setting a pace in efficient, sustainable and innovative agriculture through a hydroponic farming of tomatoes known as the Dutrestigen tomatoes. Under the initiative, tomatoes are grown with 95% less water, no soil and zero pesticides in small bags of rock wool substrate made from spinning multi basaltic rock into fine fibers. The fine fibers contain nutrients and allows the plants to soak up water even when moisture levels are low, ensuring a completely healthy food while also saving the environment. As part of a 10-year deal to preserve tropical rainforests in Africa, Norway is set to pay $150 million to Gabon to battle deforestation and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The deal is part of the Central African Forest Initiative launched by the United Nations in 2015 to link European donors with African countries. Gabon will become the latest African nation to receive funding to preserve its rainforests in order to mitigate the effects of climate change under the initiative. The Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, in collaboration with the UNESCO REED and N Federation, have committed to support, engage and equip youths with life learning skills that will enable them access decent jobs, live comfortably and contribute meaningfully to the growth of the Nigerian economy. At the press conference held in Abuja to kickstart the Youth Empowerment Initiative, which has about 400,000 National Youth Service Corps members, SDGs champions, already enlisted. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Princess Adejoke Urilukwe Atefuluri, noted that the project is aimed at changing the narratives about the Nigerian youth, preparing them for entrepreneurship roles while contributing to the attainment of the global goals. First is the background report 
and the induction training for the selected beneficiaries and report from the briefing by the Presidential Aid on SDGs. Earlier in the year, the UNESCO Read and Earn Federation signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Association of Business Executives UK to synergize and encourage entrepreneurship amongst Nigerian youths to ensure job creation. The Federation found it imperative to create meaningful and enriching sustainable programs towards enriching young people in Nigeria via intellectual capacity building, leadership and economic capacity building. One of such projects is the August Project, otherwise known as TAP Project. The TAP project has a target to train 1.2 million Nigerian youths with the first two years on various entrepreneurial skills with the intention to scale up. As part of UNESCO's medium-term strategies to advocate for a sustainable development process as well as building strategic partnership globally and nationally, the organization is collaborating with the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs to incorporate members of the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, into the TAP project as a call for action to make them beneficiaries and advocates of the project, as well as global SDGs champions. In a recent visit to the NYSC camp in Abuja, Representatives of the OSAP SDGs, Patricia Anebwe, and the President of the UNESCO Read and Earn Federation, Abdusalami Ladigolu, while sensitizing the core members on the need to scale up participation for the TAP project and the benefits attached to being part of it, encouraged them to keep spreading the message of the Sustainable Development Goals. We are trying to form a block of vibrant youth that can also help the present administration economic growth recovery. In their enthusiasm, the core members expressed gratitude to the OSAP SDGs for powering the project while further emphasizing on how much the project would impact Nigerian youths. Sustainable Development Goals, I would say it's uh, a wonderful program, especially for developing countries and also the developed countries and also the underdeveloped countries because it helps to really sustain what we have, not just for the present, but also for the future. The SDG is not just for the children of today. It is not just for us. It is us thinking about the present and also the future so that the things we already have here will not go in extinction in years to come. So it helps in preservation, even in terms of education, and the TAP project is a very enlightened project. It helps in advance of the youth to create jobs. Yeah, the TAP project is a very fundamental initiative. And I think it's for enlightenment of the youth and also the world. It helps also to create jobs and also to make the youth give us self-confidence and also to help the youth to be self-dependent. With the aim of building intellectual, economic, and leadership skills and capacities of the youth to enable them to compete favorably as active entrepreneurs in a global market, the capacity building program fits well with the strategic plan of President Muhammad Buhari to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. The project is also a follow-up to previous initiative by the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President, which saw the establishment and support for groups of young Nigerians to serve as SDGs champions. The enlisted champions were charged with the responsibility to embark on advocacy and sensitization on the global goals at their various communities and places of primary assignments. The objective of this project, therefore, is to upscale the knowledge of about 400 of the NYSC's champions by transmuting them into knowledge and active entrepreneurs who will be able to initiate startups and equally expand their businesses beyond the Nigerian frontiers. In return, the above objectives will have a ripping effect on the attainment of the SDGs, especially Goal 4, 8 and 9. 
develop the digital and entrepreneurial capacities of the youth, stimulate the growth of micro, small and medium enterprise, address the growing menace of youth unemployment and restiveness, gang-related violence as well as irregular migration to perceived greener pastures. Speaking of the meeting, Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Princess Adejoke Orilukwe Adefulire, apt on the need for youth to be duly empowered, urging both the public and private sectors to help make a difference in the lives of the young ones. Orilukwe Adefulire, who rolled out already existing intervention by the present administration to check youth restiveness, advised the youth to take advantage of all intervention being given to them. These our young people have done what we asked them to do. And we on our part must do our bit to encourage them, to appreciate them, to support them and to equip them. And that is exactly what we are doing today. We must use what we have to get what we want. If anyone is going to for anything to go into abroad, you must have what it takes to take you there. And when you get there, you cannot be a liability to yourself and to the country that you are visiting. You must have the tools, the skill that is needed there. Because what you know is that if you don't have the paper, the right document, if you travel, sell what you have and go in there, there is no way you can work. The system is so tight. I keep telling people, you must have the right skill that you needed and you must have your document that will allow you to work there. If you don't have paper to work there, if you say no because to public phone, you will you just be sleeping outside. And if you are, fed up, you are living with you, are fed up with you, they will send you out. A lot is happening on implementation of SDGs in Nigeria. Here not to commend her because she is here. But also to say that since her appointment, the institutional framework that is required to actually implement and coordinate the SDGs have been enhanced. At times I ask myself, does Madame actually know the multidisciplinary problems she has taken on herself? Because coordinating government line ministries and coordinating an SDG which cut across all the line ministries, all activities of the line ministries, looking at all type of innovations to ensure prosperity so that no one is left behind. Facilitator, President of UNESCO TAP Project, Abdul Salam Ladibolu, gave more reasons why this project is important to the attainment of the SDGs. The country is only to develop the broad-based economy needed to provide unemployment, to provide employment, competition, innovation, as well as insulation from the global price and demand shocks in the natural resource market. Stakeholders at the event while commending the senior special assistant to the president on SDGs for our readiness to always contribute to national development advocated further for the effective entrepreneurial skills as a way forward to cutting out youth unemployment and restiveness. I'm not surprised that Her Excellency has found the NYC worthy and the UN to initiate this program in the FCT. One, we have so many youth organizations in this country, but I want to tell you the NYC is unique because our core members are disciplined, they are educated, they are highly mobilized, and they have a central command. The concern today, therefore, is that all youth must be skillful, developing your potentials to the actualization of self-employment, hence the huge number of unemployed youth cannot be absorbed in the government outfit. So the way forward is entrepreneurship development, and I believe it is achievable if all hands are on deck. Some of the SDG's NYAC champions penned some words of appreciation to the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs and pledged to key into the initiative that will better their lives. We've been putting in effort. There are 
policies, their strategies brought together to help us achieve these goals. And then one key thing we have actualized or we are actualizing right now is entrepreneurship. You know, the TAP project and uh, the SDG program generally. So and from what the SSA to His Excellency said, uh, I'm encouraged to really, really be a part of this vision. Um, I've had plans for education out of the global goals, goal four, and today just shed more light into it. I loved how mommy was really willing to help people. You really find people like that in politics, and she wasn't pretending. You could tell that she actually wanted to give back to the next generation. So it inspired hope in me that there are actually more genuine people in politics. Nigeria joined the rest of the world to mark the International Day of Persons with Disability on the 3rd of December 2019. The day is set aside by the United Nations General Assembly to awaken the consciousness of all member states towards encouraging and promoting activities that will bring issues of disability to the front burner nationally. We have a report. In recent years, Disability issues have found their way to the front burner of national discourse in Nigeria and have heightened the need to address it headlong. The World Health Organization report on disabilities in Nigeria, published in 2011, indicated that about 25 million Nigerians had at least one disability, while 3.6 million of these have very significant difficulties in functioning. The report also revealed that many of them face a number of human rights abuses, such as stigma, discrimination, violence, and lack of access to health care, housing, and education. The most common type of disabilities in Nigeria include visual, physical, hearing, and intellectual impairment. And as a first step towards addressing these issues, Nigerian President Muhammad Buhari, on January 23, 2019, signed into law the Discrimination Against Persons with Disability Prohibition Act 2018, following years of relentless advocacy by disability rights groups and activists. And in committing to the realization of the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and ensuring that human rights and dignity is upheld, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, deemed it right for Nigeria to attempt to reach those who are on the edge with interventions that will improve their standards of living and status in the society, in the spirit of leaving no one behind, as enshrined in the philosophy of the SDGs. The future is very bright, and like we all agree, there's ability in disability. And these people are going to be very productive members of the society. They have been, we have just um, seen the exhibition now, people, a blind man, I was able to make shoe, you know, was able to make a um, basket. So you can see they have uh, special abilities in them. I know that there is so much ability in disability. And I know that these are people who don't need our sympathy. All they need is love. Other speakers maintained that to achieve the SDGs, persons with disabilities must be fully integrated and allowed full participation in national development. They also appealed to persons with disabilities to take advantage of interventions from government or good-spirited individuals. All of us must be included in our abilities to be productive. If there is any way to celebrate today, it is to inspire people with soft challenges. The theme of this year's celebration starts promoting the participation of persons with disabilities and the leadership, taking action on 2030 development agenda. Cannot, could not have come at a better time, especially looking at government rights to having an all-inclusive system where everyone is a stakeholder in the business of government. The passage of the People Living with a Disability Act was to show commitment of the government to that effect. 
The celebration featured presentation of wheelchairs, walking sticks to the persons with disabilities, exhibition of products made by persons with disabilities, and the launch of the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Prohibition Act 2018. The Act provides for the full integration of persons with disabilities into the society and aims to establish a national commission for persons with disabilities that will ensure that they have access to housing, education and health care. Some of the persons with disabilities used the opportunity to clamor for some of their needs, especially for the speedy establishment of the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities. We know what is wrong with us. We know the solution to our life. We don't want to be under any ministry anymore. We want to stand on our own. We want to run our lives. As deaf, blind, physical, uh, spinal cord, we know what is wrong with us. We know how to get there. We have learned people, well-educated people. So I don't see any reason why we cannot have this commission as early as possible. Enough of time to say, yes, it's coming. We are going to do it. Let's do it now. Honestly, I'm happy. Honestly, I am happy. And I'm a parent. That is the Nigeria that people, Nigeria give, people us the give us the opportunity to be in, of to be in charge affair. of our own affairs. This is the first of this its, its kind of its and, kind. We are happy. and we are happy. The enactment of this law is to first put in place measures for its full implementation to ensure equal treatment and participation of people with disabilities across Nigeria. In the same vein, the Speaker of Nigeria's House of Representatives, Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, in celebration of December 3 World Disability Day, empowered persons with disabilities in Nigeria with empowerment materials. The Speaker will also use the occasion to pledge his commitment to Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, said the gesture was aimed at improving the living standard of the disabled reducing inequality and discrimination drastically in the society. While presenting empowerment materials to persons with disability at the National Assembly Complex, Bajabi Amila enjoyed Nigerians to create a suitable environment for people living with disabilities to enable them achieve their dreams. The materials include 20 wheelchairs and 10 scholarships to the PWDs. 17 broad goals of the 2030 Agenda are designed to remake our world, creating therefrom better existence for all of mankind. The United Nations has chosen promoting the participation of persons with disabilities and their, and their leadership as the theme of this year's International Day for People with Disabilities. This is an invitation for all of us to jointly take corrective action to determine that we will in government and the private sector in our communities and social groups be intentional about seeking out those of our brothers and sisters whose abilities have been too long overlooked and their value too often ignored. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development in her remarks restated government's commitment to continue to alleviate the plight of people with disabilities. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development is a ministry that was created on the 21st of August 2019 by His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari to, among other things, formulate programs and policies of government geared towards the protection and support and assistance of the most vulnerable society. Some of the beneficiaries could not hide their joy as they thanked the speaker for his show of love. You need to see the excitement on the faces of people with disabilities because first we are marking the International Day for People with Disabilities and it's so honorable to have the speaker, the distinguished speaker himself, you know, mark this day especially for and with people with disabilities. And he didn't just stop there, he went as far as giving scholarship, you know, to students, he gave mobility aids to, you know, those needing it. It's just wonderful. 
Also speaking, the Chairman House of Representative Committee on SDGs, Rotimi Agusoye, commended the Speaker over the initiative and called for other lawmakers to follow suit, adding that such moves will only assist Nigeria in achieving the SDGs. The issue of people living with disabilities is referenced in uh, the 17 goals of uh, sustainable development goals, particularly in the area of education, growth, shelter, empowerment, and so on. So, if you see what Mr. Speaker is doing today, it's very key. And I will advise that other honorable members to go back to their constituencies and emulate the honorable speaker. It's very important. And that has been the size of our program this week. Do keep a date with us next week as we bring you another refreshing episode. I am Toin Kamian John. Thank you for staying with us. <laughs>